This is Georges Seurat. Georges Seurat was born in Paris, France on December 2, 1859. Seurat was a quiet, intelligent child who grew up with very wealthy parents who always helped encourage his love of art. In 1878, when Seurat was only 19 years old, he attended the School of Fine Arts in Paris, where he began to refine his artistic ability. After completing school, Seurat set up his own art studio with the help of his parents, not far from their home. Because his parents supported him, Seurat was able to paint and explore many different areas of art without many burdens, while other artists at the time had to sell their artwork to survive. With the freedom to explore new ways to create art and not having to worry about whether or not his art would sell, Seurat began to explore the science of how people see color. Seurat found that instead of mixing colors together on a palette, he could place tiny dots of different colors next to each other in his paintings and the human eye would mix the colors visually. Seurat called this type of painting divisionism, but today we know it as pointillism. In many ways, pointillism is as much a science as it is an art. Pointillism uses the science of optics to create different colors from many different dots placed so close to each other that they blur into a single image to the eye. When you look at a pointillism painting from a distance, your eye will recognize the image by blending the dots together. This is called an optical mixture. This is the same way that computer and television screens work today. The tiny pixels of different colors on our screens are just like the dots in a pointillist painting. Today, we are going to create our very own pointillism painting based on a painting by Georges Seurat called Sin from the Grand Shot. Sin from Le Grand Jatte is a landscape painting which shows a river, a large tree, bright green grass, a tranquil blue sky, and a small red sailboat, all formed by placing small dots of color next to one another, which allow our eyes to create the images through an optical mixture. For our painting today, we will only need a few supplies. First, we will be using Q-tips to create the small dots of color that will form our final picture. There will also be another slightly larger bowl at your table. This bowl will be used to place Q-tips that you have already used, so that way we do not create a large mess at our tables. Finally, for our painting project today, we will be using these tempera paint trays, which will be pre-wetted for you. Each table will only have one set of paints, one bowl of Q-tips, and one bowl for used Q-tips. So you must share with everyone at your table. Please be very careful with our paint, trying your very best not to get paint anywhere except for on our paper. When it is time to paint, please notice that there are two sides of each Q-tip that you may use. Try not to mix colors. Instead, use both sides of the Q-tip for a different color before discarding it in the larger bowl. Before beginning your painting, please remember to write your name on the back of your paper so I know who created each work of art. After your name is on the back of your paper, you may start painting. Start with one color, like green for the grass, and use it to create a shoreline across your paper made entirely of small dots. Do not drag your Q-tip across the painting to create lines. 
Remember, pointillism is all about the dots of color. If you drag your Q-tip instead of creating dots, it will not be a pointillism painting. Once you created dotted lines that map out areas like the green grassy shoreline, the blue river, the brown tree, and the blue sky, fill each of these large areas with dots of the same color that you use to map it out. Do this before changing colors. Also, try not to push down too hard when creating dots or getting the paint on your Q-tips. Doing this will make your Q-tips fall apart too fast, create a mess with our paints, and it may even ruin your pointillism painting. Gently laying down our dots helps our Q-tips last longer and makes our painting much neater. After you have placed dots of one color over large areas, you can add another color over it to create optical color mixtures. In my painting, I placed a few small yellow dots in my tree and in the grass in order to change the way we see the colors from a distance. I also created a dotted outline around my boat using black paint so that way it would show up even better in the water. You can experiment with these optical mixtures in your own painting using different colors to make objects pop, blend, or change colors from a distance. During your painting, I will keep a picture of Seurat's painting on the screen for you to use as a guide. I will also keep the painting I created hanging on the board so that you can use it to guide your work as well. When you are finished with your painting, please place it carefully on the drying rack so that the paint can dry. Remember, have fun and let's get started.